Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and another episode of what we've automated this week. And let me go ahead and share my desktop. There we go. And we're going to use Prompt Assistant, which is, of course, our tool to for doing a lot of stuff, right? But um, you notice I'm, I'm moving more and more from QAP into Prompt Assistant. It just takes time. And recently modified, so we're going to launch that. Get a list of files we've worked on the last week. It, uh, it 47 files, all right. Let's see what we worked on. Now let's uh, let's see Move that over to here and yeah. So Kelly is a tax accountant. If you need a good tax guy, he, he's great. He he like me hates the IRS. Um, anyway, TMI. But um yeah, he we're we're doing some stuff for him. Getting his his clients currently use a tool that is just not great, and they're giving him his data in a really weird structure. So we, uh, Isaias went through and automated. Actually, part of it we didn't automate. Part of it was just, it's a one and done thing because they're moving to a different system. Some of the other stuff we automated because it's going to keep occurring through another three or four months um, of getting data. So we wrote a script to automate grabbing stuff out of an Excel file, transposing it in different ways, and, and making it um, much easier to use. Um, so that's stuff for Kelly. Kevin, we're doing, he's he's also sort of an accountant. He's a, I forget what it's called, but he actually testifies in court and his clients are lawyers. And so we were looking for Kevin. He has a tool called Locus. We use an API for automating stuff. And we ripped his client list out of it and then tried to see if they were on LinkedIn. And then while we were there, we realized um, that hey, maybe instead of just looking at his current clientele, let's find people that he doesn't know. So we have a script that will rip a lot of the, the likes and skills and groups and interests of people. So we did a search for people that are his target market and then filtered on those and then ripped their, them into a spreadsheet so he could aggregate them and get a look at them um, as far as you know, like the groups they belong to, the schools they went to and other things. And just say, hey, here are people, here's like... Here's a here's a company that has three lawyers in his area that it, and he I don't know if he knows them or not because it's much more difficult to cross check that with the other list but he can eyeball it very quickly right so we put that together for him. Um, this one actually was also a LinkedIn that's why it was done around the same time uh, for for my buddy Mike and uh, we won't go into but it was a, another client project of basically getting a list of people finding them on LinkedIn, and then seeing what they have in common. Um, and again, we, we just do, we're not doing it to reach out to, to the people. It's just to understand. It's kind of like customer research without doing a lot of, you know, custom research, which costs a lot of money. This add to startup. Now, uh, Rizwan has been converting some of our V1 scripts to V2. Let me see. I'm going to open this. I think this one's done, or at least done enough where I can demonstrate it. So this script, it looks now, because we're all sharing the same drive where this is under, um, it doesn't find some stuff. See, it says users this one, which I don't have access to, right? Um, it pulled that. So this wouldn't normally pull this way. We should have a, a clear all and start f fresh button, but no one else is doing this besides F. But you can see we, we added icons. So first, Rizwan converted this to V2, which is great because it's a really cool script. And Windows, like 8 through 11, it's ridiculously hard to find that add to startup well it's not that hard but if you're not a power user which by the way check out our course on becoming a power user but if you're not a power user uh, it's really annoying to get to so we have a tool that makes it very easy and if you want to add something you just select add find your script um, not super tramp music <laughs> probably um, and you can add it to your startup oh and here we need to he needs to build an error this is why we haven't released it yet right so I'm going to exit out of it, but you get the idea, right? Um, let's see here, 16, that's interesting. But you can um, disable, so like if I wanted to disable that, it should update that icon for us and re-enable it. This, and this S drive, this is what we all share. It's also where this file is, is on this S drive. And it makes it easy because then we all have the same paths. Um, this Telegram bot schedule, so that's mine, and it is enabled on my computer. Um, that's what reminds the hero members... Um, we, we automate messages to our private Telegram group where we're constantly helping clients. And uh, it just reminds them before the hero calls, which are Fridays and Saturdays. So yeah, this is a, a pretty cool little script. Um, that's why we were converted it to V2 and Rizwan's learning, but he, he did a good job on that one. Or Still a little bit of work to do, but not bad. 
this one, holy cow. So today, yesterday and today, my wife and I are trying to, we usually, I hate taxes. Oh, yes, I said earlier, I hate taxes, right? But um, I go through, I spend a lot on Amazon, purposely so, so I have one place to go for my receipts to say, okay, what was a business expense? So it's ridiculous. Let me go ahead and share. I think I can share this without having to obfuscate a ton of data. Let me go to Amazon and orders. Oh, good. You can see what I've ordered recently. Oh, my attention is required. Um, I ordered some dark chocolate. Let's just pick something here. So let me launch this tool. Now this tool, so let me show you first the manual process. If I want to get this invoice, I'd have to say like, open a new tab, okay. Come here, print this page, okay. And then click print again, okay. And then save, okay, on a certain folder, right? It's it's a lot of clicks, it's ridiculous. So we were trying to have it and we're still gonna get this done because I think this is a great um, solution, is to when you mouse over, hit a hotkey, it goes and does all that with Rafadium. Um, I thought of this right before the hero call on Saturday, and that's when basically we, we get it, we, we have that time, have the hero call, and then Earth in and everyone are done for the week because we work five, they already work six days a week. I don't ask people to you know work unless you have to. So I said, hey, let's just get it where if we copy this to the clipboard, it will automatically go do those things I just mentioned. So let me launch the script, and it... it It'll log in. It'll actually tell me. So I can't do it in Chrome. So that's the other one we'd say. This. Let's make it simple. So I'll 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 stay in Firefox when I do this. And again, this is where we'll have a more robust solution later. But for now, it's fine, right? So I'm going to come in here. Now let's download invoices. It's going to say close Chrome, which we shouldn't. That's part of Rafidium, which is AS and I. We were talking about that shouldn't be there. So now. Chrome launched, it's running, it's on this page. Um, I'm gonna move it out, actually, well, we can leave it there, it doesn't matter, but watch what happens. If I copy this link, which is has a certain URL with Amazon in it, Rafidium in the background, so it just created that file for me. That's all I have to do. So when, when I went to do this, uh, I'll give you an idea of, uh, let's look at 2023. 20, 471 orders in 2023, right? Like that was 48, if I remember right. Yeah, 48 pages I had to go through and say, was this a business expense, not a business expense? Um, so yeah, not not fun, right? And imagine doing all those clicks over and over. Now, before I wrote a little thing that would just auto-click things, but it was really, really crappy because I'd always think of this last minute. Um, and like I said, we're going to create one a little more um, advanced where inside Chrome, I could stay in Chrome, I could hover over and hit a hotkey. I think that's the best way. That way it's dynamic. I'm using the browser. Uh, and at the same time, it's uh, very simple and easy to do. So yeah, I just realized not that my webcam had to be there. I'm doing things and you're not seeing it. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was one where uh, at some point we'll release that or you know, um, make it available. But that, that's a great one. Um, let me make sure I exit out of that and the Rafidium. Oh, darn it. I exited out of the uh, recently used tools. Recently modified. Uh, download invoices. Okay, capabilities. I honestly don't know what that was. It's in a weird folder. I'm not sure, I don't know, I think that has to do with the same thing. Um, session, yeah, these all three have to do with that script. The MRU, um, that one's not, Irfan is still working on it. It was much more complicated than we thought. We did incorporate some of the stuff into our, the auto suggester tool, um, but in that it was, some of the parts are being very complicated, but Irfan's getting close to finishing that one. Um, the clip share V2, Rizwan's made some updates to that where it's making it more dynamic. And that way we can um, share it with everybody, right? It'll be something that's, uh, but it allows us to pick a network drive and then keep that synced, um, use that to share our, like our clipboard or files uh, with anyone. And we can also use it to send messages to each other, which is just a, a byproduct. Uh, clip GUI, I don't know what clip GUI, it, clip share, oh, still so clip share. Color under mouse. So this is another one Rizwan was converting to V2. I can go ahead and launch this one. And. 
hit the hotkey, we can see here is um, Windows C. So if I hit, if I move my mouse over here and hit Windows C, it'll show you that and um, it puts that into the clipboard. So I can paste. Well, and I didn't actually mean to be searching for that. But you get the idea, right? So Windows C copies the color under the mouse. Very simple, so I can use that somewhere. Um, just very handy to have. I have something very similar in mine. Now, I don't use our, our Notify class, which I'll try to remember to put the link up here, but it, it, that's what we're displaying them in. It's very cool. But yeah, he did a good job with that. I think what we want to do is to have... I think we were going to add the pound sign at the beginning because in some places you want that and others you don't. And that should be listed in here as a preference of, you know, have the pound at the beginning or not. Because auto hotkey sometimes needs it, sometimes doesn't. And other things, you know, other programs, you're going to need it and sometimes you won't. Uh, this this compare sets V2, this one I wrote year, years ago at TI because in TI I worked with a lot of list of products from a, a data warehouse, they have a hundred thousand products or more, right? And a lot of IDs. And I'm like, I need to get list of different things and see which ones are in this list and not this list or overlap. So let's open the V2 version. Cause I think it's done or it's close enough to done. Um, and so let's say, so here are some other things. So I'm going to run it and it shows us, Hey, what's this list up here is in this list, but not this list. This list is in this list, but not this list. And this list, this one is in both. So I can also have a hotkey. So control shift A will copy this list. Control shift B will copy that list. And we're using the colors, right? And what do red and blue make? They make purple. So control shift C gives you the purple, the six. Also, we added where uh, if we have spaces here and we're not trimming the spaces, so I run this. And now six, this six is different than that six because we didn't trim the white space. So that's just a preference. You can turn it on to have an auto trim. And that way, even if there are spaces there, it takes care of that. You know, we probably, that's interesting. I'm going to have to add that. We should have a case sensitive or not, because that would be another nice thing to say. Do you want to make the comparison case sensitive or not? That would take probably, well, I think he, he used a map on this, but um, we anyway, it, it, it to me, it's something that, that definitely could be something that we care about because often... You know, if actually, I don't even know. Let's see. Um, so let's say if Joe Joe was here, I don't think that's going to show. Yeah, the two Joes are different, right? But really, if I said case insensitive, that should be in the same. So anyway, you get the idea, right? All, also, this list, you'll see there's, you know, what, like maybe 30 or so rows. It, I've put in thousands. So you can put in thousands. You're only going to see the top, you know, whatever. But... I've put in thousands in this and it's it works just fine. So it's a really quick, easy way to take lists, dedupe them or say what's in both or what's in one. So like with email addresses, let's say I want I have a list of customers who I want to send this to. There's some that have already received it or opened it. I could take those list of emails, put them here and then put the other list here. Um, and then it would tell me here are people who have, you know, received it, you know, have already received it. Oh, I want the ones that are exclusive. So those I haven't received it yet. Great. Give me that one. Um, you know, you get the idea, right? So it's a very cool little script. Yeah. I like it. This one, I made an update to it. I didn't realize it still had the hotkey in it. And, uh, we were testing something. I forget what, but we realized it, uh, it had a hotkey still in it. When I made the video, I mentioned there were three different ways and I think I went with the shell hooks. But if you go look, I'll just look for um, sort, dialog sort. What it does is when you're in an open or save dialog, it automatically sorts it by the last modified first, which is to me, that's it's what I want, right? So that's great to have that script. Um, this one, we haven't started on it yet, but I just mentioned it in passing because we were doing something. I'm like, hey, you know, it'd be really easy to write a script to disable the clipboard, which a lot of times people in certain situations, you'd want that, right? So you can see it's zero bytes, but it's just a placeholder of like, hey, that's something we should create. This MP3 ripper, it's it's amazing. Let me, let me, um, now here, this is, oops, wrong one. This is QAP, not prompt assistant. And I'm going to open one of the, um, Dropbox, this is where we just have video. Oh, and again, I just made this video for Ryan. It's another tool that we just shared. But let's say I wanted to rip the audio. So where's my MP3 ripper? Uh, 
So let's say I wanted to rip the audio out of that video file. Now this video is, I think it's usually here, length. It's six, and, six minutes and 17 seconds. I'm gonna drag this on here. It's gonna rip that audio and it's already done, right? And so it's, it's now an MP3 file, six minutes, 17 seconds long but it does it that fast like it's it's crazy fast you can take uh you know movies and stuff and yeah it takes a little bit longer because they're you know, an hour or whatever long but very cool um it does you can choose the audio quality um i think what rizwan was doing because we didn't convert this to v2 because it's a really complicated it's not it's not complicated but the working we're using ffmpeg and so we we have it remember some oh which actually this one's not done because we don't have a restore to defaults oh you know what i think we decided not to because it's just one this is the only setting right this is the one setting that you'd have so um, what we did do is make it recursive so you can drag a folder onto here and all the videos under it it would rip them all for you loop over them um, recursively under the folders and subfolders to get all the videos uh, and do that. So it's a really cool, uh, very, I'm, I'll probably sell that for like four ninety nine or something, right? It's not going to be a lot, but it, it is a really powerful, cool script that we've spent a lot of time on that one. And probably the other one that should be in here, will probably come up to it soon is the actual, pro oh, here it is, process through FFmpeg. This one, it's similar to that one, but it, um, it processes videos. And that's what, I wish I had an original one I could show you the, the comparison. It generally speaking shrinks videos down somewhere between like a third the size up to half the size of what the original video is. And usually you can barely tell the difference in quality. Like it's really amazing. And this tool now, that's what Rizwan added was whatever I had last, like if I had this say slow and exit it when I restart it, so it remembers what you had, but I can also hit restore defaults, which that's what that way if someone forgets what the defaults were, um, they can easily restore back. Now, we're probably going to add this, this, and this um, to a, a menu. Probably create it up here in a menu. So, right above this. That's really easy to do. So, it's just, it'll make it less cluttered. Um, and actually, yeah, so all these, the open last folder, I think we keep here. The skip, that's where if we have multiple ones and you decide, oh, I don't actually want that video, I can hit skip. Now, probably you should have a skip all or end as well. But yeah, it's um, it's a very, very cool script. You know, Handbrake does all this stuff too, but it's so complicated. Ours tool is very simple of like, hey, which encoding do you want? The H265, this one, this is part of why it does such a great job shrinking the files, but not all like the Windows Media Player by default doesn't have the um, H.265 codec. So you need a tool like VLC or there's a lot of tools that have it built in. Or if you put it in your browser, the browser often plays it just fine. So I give our clients when we have custom client calls where we do consultations, I record the call and then I put it in Dropbox and I give them the link and then they can usually play it and almost nobody ever complains. Now, if they download that file and try to play it with Windows Media Player, then I have the problem. Um, of course, if I know that ahead of time, I can make it 264 and then it's no problem. But this 265, it does a really good job shrinking that file size. So, um, and since I keep everything in Dropbox, that, that's why I, I use it a lot. So, get active path, this tool, um, that's what this icon is right here. And let's see, so Control Shift C, Let's see, actually here, it's gonna get the path to this script because this is not a hockey GUI. Um, so that is where that script is located. If I'm in Explorer, I can select a file and hit it. But if I'm in like Zoom, I'm sorry, if I'm on a browser, oh, let's see if it'll work. I haven't tried it in Firefox. I don't usually browse in Firefox. I'm gonna hit Control Shift C. So it built, see this, it built, now if I go paste that in Word, um, it built a pretty hyperlink and we keep, we're adding, you know, more and more programs, but that way, um, it, it, uh, it's really cool. So that's that. And then I think Rizwan, let's see here. Yeah, we, we added an, oh, oh, well that wasn't a file path. So let me go back to here. I didn't pay attention to that. Control shift C. So we see the quotes here. And then if I paste, oops, paste that. Oh, he still hasn't added it. So we got to fix that. Um, that should have had the quotes, because sometimes, <laughs> not, not smart quotes, I hate word uh, for that reason, which I've disabled, which is really weird. But anyway, um, 
sometimes you want to have it so that I told him let's add this as a preference and apparently it just hasn't finished it so oops wrong tool let me exit out of that tool uh, sometimes you know the wrap path and quote sometimes you want quotes around it and sometimes you don't and I thought let's make that just as here so it's not a hotkey to change it but it just allows you to have that as an option in case you know you prefer them with the quotes or not but yeah very cool tool um, I've documented another video so i'm not going to go too deep into that but it's a really cool tool so we were just making some updates on that close that guy and i can close this now too um, so Irfan is working on videos teaching rifadium which is awesome and he's also added the stuff to prompt assistant on his version now i haven't imported i don't think he's exported them otherwise i would import it and show you how simple that is but um yeah Rafadium, we have, I think there's nine ways to web scrape with auto hotkey. Um, Rafidium, I would say, is when you're looking for a very, really doing web scraping, like a robust solution, you, and, and the, the biggest caveat is you have to be able to download a driver, right, an executable, and it takes care of it for you, but a lot of people can't install executables or download them, and so if you can't download and have an executable on your computer, Rafidium's not for you. If you are wanting to do that and you're doing more than just a very very basic thing then rafidium is great because it's much more stable um, it just it also though has to run in debug mode which was part of the problem of here with the the firefox and chrome that's why we said hey let's i didn't want it opening in my window over and over i'm like let's just use firefox and then you open it in chrome on your own and I don't have to deal with that and have different tabs and everything. So anyway, but Rafidium is a very robust browser. And Isaias was giving him some more tips on how to do a couple things. But um, yeah, he's working on some videos. And now that he has a new mic, it's, his, his audio is much better. So he's going to make some videos uh, teaching people how to use it. You do have to understand objects, right? Our course on objects is a, is a great one to learn how to use objects. Anyway, here's the that LinkedIn profile scraper. So we wrote a script. You know, for the other tools, now we get to reuse it for clients and not have to charge them a lot. We just, you know, adapt it, tweak it slightly. Um, doo -doo -doo. Message master. So we, our message master, the the newsletter tool that we send, um, it's written in V1 and it's really complicated. So we didn't update it. However, our tool to extract, we're doing different stuff with LinkedIn. I'm sorry, our newsletter and our list and how it's generated. And so we, we bought a really great plugin. It's a newsletter plugin. I've been using it for years, but I didn't have a paid version. And they had a sale and I was looking at it. I'm like, let's go ahead. It sounds good. And wow, it's crazy impressive. We, I'm really stoked on what we're doing. And we're able to create lists from built from like our EDD is our download tool. And I can categorize and say, hey, if they down, you know, and I can list which downloads and say, hey, if they download any of these things that have to do with Excel, put them in an Excel list. And then we'll have a, like a drip campaign teaching people about Excel, right? And that'll all be automated. So it's really, I, I'm really, really happy with my purchase. And it was not expensive. I forget how much, uh, may, maybe 80 bucks, something like that. It, I mean, for what it's doing, it's really powerful. So I'm very happy. Uh, so, but our newsletter tool, when we go to um, use it and launch it, let me let me go ahead and, and launch it. So again, um, tools, message master. So this is what it looks like. Um, thankfully, none, none of the emails we send them, they show up here. But because I sent them last, they, they're not there. But when I go to import list, this it was hard-coded to a certain folder. And I don't want to have to navigate to it. And so now it should automatically go to, which that's weird. Um, it should have jumped right to the right. I think it did. But anyway, you get it. we just changed the location of where it's looking. So I don't have to navigate to it. Uh, because we changed our source but yeah this is this used the mailgun api for sending emails because we we have like 5500 email addresses in our newsletter so um, we import them and it does a mail merge when it's distributing them we put in the html email in here it's pretty slick i can um, keep track of the lists but i wouldn't want to have to obfuscate all that so i'm not gonna go look at that um, this one goes and pulls the latest one and then because we have questions this was a really interesting issue our online tool, um, that newsletter tool I was mentioning, it's really cool, but we have a couple questions when you, from EDD. When you get a download, we ask you how long I've been using AutoHotKey um, and another question, oh yeah, your job position like type thing. If you're a manager or entrepreneur or a, a student, you're retired. Um, because 
we want to add you to different lists um, and offer you different things, right? Well, that is in a form that doesn't connect to our newsletter thing. So we have a script that runs um, and it looks at the last people in the last week and actually migrates them using MySQL. We connect to our database online. Um, it, it's similar to an API, but it, I wouldn't call it an API, but I, I guess it is. It's all done with SQL and programmatic. So it, it's technically an API. It's just not a web service API that most people think of when you hear APIs. Anyway, um, so we wrote a custom script that checks every day, just runs some SQL and, and cleans it up and, and moves, migrates people for us, which is really cool. Uh, prompt assistant, so errors. So it, Isaiah has it logging errors, and, and occasionally we get them, but it's gotten a lot better. This locker, um, I'm going to have to figure out how to do a video on that and actually demonstrate it, but it's a pretty cool little script. Earth, Rizwan was converting it to V2, and it um, it allows you to hit to launch it, and it kills the power to your monitors, and then you can hit a hotkey, and it brings the power back, which is really nice when you work in like corporate America. It's very handy. Um our clip history tool, it's getting really close to being ready, and I'll save that until we're closer to actually demonstrate it, but it's much far superior to the stupid Windows history tool. Um, it also allows you, as the auto suggester, as you type, you can have stuff from your clipboard history display where you are. If you have it filtered on like the last program or something, it will let you know that it's been filtered. Uh, lots of really cool stuff there. Um, yeah, that one's getting close to being ready to be released. Uh, more client work um, there, and here's my main script, and Zoom Windows. I think I was adjusting, I have some hotkeys for launching and sharing my screen and sharing and start recording, and so I had just updated those. I was manually playing with it, and uh, that's what that is. So, hope you enjoyed that. If you liked the video, please like the video, because uh, you want to be consistent when you're liking stuff and be liking things where you like them. I don't know. So, I hope you have a great day, and... Uh, Check out our courses. And that's it. Have a good day. Cheers.